fantastic Connie Wright, and a lovely slide guitar, singing that beautiful voice. That was the Fundamental Things from Fundamental, her LP. We'll be hearing more from her later, but now, please welcome the man that kicked off our show, Mr Robbie Williams. <laughs> welcome to our show. It's like, it's like, it's like that, but, it's, no, it's like Top of the Pops, but grown up here, isn't it? This is exactly right. Yeah, I suppose the, it is like Top that. of the Pops with pubes. The pubes. Yes. I do do an inspection of all the audience before they come in, you know you that. See, you must. Yes. I like that with my ass. And sometimes the bands as well. Yes. Now, um, you started as a song strong from your uh, I've Been Expecting You record. Mm -hmm. What is uh, that song about? Um, I was on tour last year and the uh, ticket sales weren't going very well and nobody was buying the album. That was last year, of course. <laughs> um, and I was down. I was really down. And loads of people wanted lots of stuff from me, and I couldn't give it to them. And I just went, listen, I'm, I'm not being a, I'm not being a dickhead, but I'm not feeling very well now. And that's what strong was about. You think you're, I'm strong, but you're wrong. But now things couldn't be going better. You sold out three Wembleys or something. Free, the, 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 the ticket sales of, and records have gone, exploded, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must be really hard. <laughs> it is yeah, for someone like me to take that on board. I, I never meant to, to sell out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start. Can I go straight back to the beginning? What was the first sort of music that you listened to and you thought, hey, I want to make music? What's the first things that you liked? Um, well, my mother who's over there. She, uh, she used to have Nat King Cole records and Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, Cole Porter stuff. And that's what I listened to first. And also Tom Jones, mm. Frank Sinatra. Um, and then I got into hip hop when I was about 10 started collecting all the electro albums and stuff like that so i missed everything uh, for a few years then i was seriously into dr hook just couldn't get it out of my yeah. system uh, you know it was um, that on the cover of the rolling stones that did it for me yeah that first song just blew my mind and that what made that's what made me join a boy band <laughs> <laughs> so let me take you to swiss how did you join take that um how did you join? How it did was you a get fluke i got the wrong bus <laughs> 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 Where did you think? What did you answer an advert? What happened? Yeah, um, I did. There was an there was an advert in some local radio station, and uh, I went along and thought, I'll do that. Hmm. And I did. And was it enjoyable looking back? No, it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can't say it was. Uh, we did, you know, it, it's put me where I am today. So, you know, there was a lot of good stuff in there. We had a lot of laughs and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was all right. Now, um, you mentioned Tom Jones earlier on, and uh, you started this year singing with Tom Jones at the Brits. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you were always a fan of him. Did, 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 uh, was it great singing with him? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I'd, I was so scared about meeting him, let alone singing with him on stage, even though I had met him before at a hotel bar in Berlin about four o'clock one morning. Good time. And, and I, I'd been drinking, and I looked a complete and utter mess. And I know he'd been on it longer than I had, and he looked like the front cover of Fitness and Health magazine. <laughs> that's, Tom. He's, he's that, that's Tom for you. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be on our New Year's Eve Hootenanny program at the. Is he? Uh, at, yes. This, this New Year's Eve. This New Year's Eve. Is he's that going to be, be here? Yes, it is. Can I come? Please, would you? Yeah, come I'm and give us your predictions and your resolutions. We love you too. All right then. Cool. Be here for this. Obviously, the most important to be place to be on New Year's Eve. Did Tom give you any advice? Um. No. I can't remember. But just dress it, presumably he looked just like that in the hotel bar, as smart as that. Everything, apart from the nose was a bit smaller. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Glastonbury, you did that, and that was a huge, like, everybody was singing along to Angels. Yeah, that must have been nice, it was quite yeah. amazing, because, like, two minutes before I was going on, I was getting, it's 80,000 people out there, you know. I used to be in a boy band, and the odd 30,000 may hate me, you know, and I was, I was so scared. But I got, up, I got up on stage and did Let Me Entertain You and everybody went mad and, you know, it was the highlight of my career so far. Apart from doing your show, of course, George. It was exactly. Being and, here. And looking forward to the New Year's Eve show. Yeah. Why should that be next year? Yeah. But now, also, now, of course, you write your songs um, with uh, Guy Chambers. Here's, here's actually Angels here. Uh -huh. right on a board rather nicely. Who, who writes what when you're writing? I, I wrote that bit. Angels. <laughs> yeah. The very nice, the most important bits, a bit we all remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I write all the words most of the melodies and some of the music, but he wrote all the music on that one, right. and I wrote the words. Does it always work? Because some songwriters do work like that, just music and words. Yeah. Does it normally work like that, your lyricist, yeah. did you say? Yeah, well, I get something in my head and I, and I sing, so, or I come in and go, I've got this riff, and it goes, well, like that. Apart from it wouldn't go, uh, it'd be better than that. Yeah. My riffs normally are. 
And uh, then he copies it for me, and we do it like that. Now, um, later on in the show, you're going to do uh, Karma Killer for us. What's oh, yes. That? Oh, yes. What's that oh, yeah. song all about? It's about somebody I don't like. Who <laughs> 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 Yeah. It's more that than that, actually. Uh, That's I like you! That's all prick. Is it? <laughs> yeah. And um, it's about uh, my ex-manager. Hi, Nigel, it's me. I'm doing really well. Really nice to see you. So loads of records doing really well for myself. I'm worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ian. Well, it's really good to have you on. I want to ask one thing. I want to ask Ian a question. Ian, what's your view of Robbie? Oh, oh nice. Ian. <laughs> he likes you, you see. Oh, yeah. Right, can I move along? No, I'm going to move along. I'm sorry anyway. <laughs> Robbie Williams, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Leave him with Ian for a moment. We'll be hearing more from him later in the program. But now a band, of course, their music has been great and they've been around for a while now making these beautiful harmonies. Pop, made a little bit more popular by a commercial that's around at the moment, but the, the art of what they do is here right now in front of us. Please welcome ladies.